Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna be doing some more work on the generator room. Next thing I gotta do is mount this box. So, I got this generator cord here. Generator cord, as you can see. 10 feet, 10 four, good for 30 amps. This is what will plug into the generator over here. Um, It's a twist lock. So this is the end that will go into the generator. This will go to, into our inlet box, but I need a way of it coming out of that um, generator room. So my idea was, is I'd have this side that could, you could pull out. So my idea was I'd have basically this box that I cut a hole in the back of mounted onto the side of the generator building. And then if this will cooperate with me, this can stick through there. And it's probably not long enough right here without cutting that, um, uh, look, it kind of is. So then that can stick through like that. And obviously you'll be able to pull it free through. And, um, I get all these ears out of the way the cover can stick on so then you just have this little bit out of here and once it's not cut when you want to use it you can just pull the cord out and when you're done with it you can go into the generator room and pull it back in to right here I think I'm gonna put it right underneath these louvers here and this should end pretty close to a stud so I bet you I can mount it right here. And if there isn't a stud, well, then we'll go from there and figure it out. Unless it would look better to mount it back there. I think I'd rather just line everything up though. That's the center of our hole right there. Side. I think that burned some of that uh, styrofoam in there. Okay, yeah, not sure if you can see that, but we do have a hole right here. And yeah, there you have it. We definitely got into a stud there because that felt pretty solid. Now our bottom screws on this won't be going into a stud, so I'm just going to use these short ones. They don't really need to hold on. I mean, the thing's solid. Eh, you know what? They still kind of help. Alright, cool. Man, cords are expensive. Even if I went to just, probably, even if I just built my own, which I considered it, it was still going to be expensive, especially those cord ends now are so freaking expensive. So I just bought this one. This one was like 55 bucks, which was the cheapest one they had. I didn't need a very long one. Just like, holy crap, though. So. So since we only need this end sticking out, we're better to just go in and push this end through. Come in here, we'll uh, poke this end out. That should be enough right there. So yeah, you can see I'll just be able to pull this out of there and put it back there when you don't need it. Let's put our cover on here. It 
These guys work with Phillips number two, but they work better with Phillips number three. I don't even keep a Phillips number three in my tool bag. Maybe I should. I used to keep this one, but then I noticed I just never use the thing, so I stopped carrying it with me. being like that. All right, there we go. You can put locks through these if you wanted to. I don't care. I think that looks all right there. Don't know if I showed you this once I took the plastic wrap off. I took the plastic wrap off though and siliconed it up. I might, I might strap that in there with like a half inch conduit strap or something just so you can't pull the whole thing out so you can only pull the amount that you'd ever need. So far I'm liking this little building. It's a cool little building and it's a fun project. All right, it's time to work on this thermostat setup here. I finally got a thermostat so I can continue work on this. This whole thing has been sort of all over the place. I'm just doing stuff as I have the material. But before I can actually put this thermostat on, we gotta pull our wire through this pipe so we can actually terminate everything here. We've gotta open this up so we can pull wire. See which key it is. I just grabbed these out of the lockbox. I'm not sure which one it is. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, let's run some wire through this pipe. Got some single conductor here. This is RW90, so it's okay to be outside. I'm hoping this is enough. This is the littlest. I have a whole bunch of, got a couple big rolls of it or decently sized rolls of it and then some smaller ones. I just want to use up these smaller ones instead of peeling more off the big ones. I'm gonna go from in here. I think this is just a little bit easier. I don't have to deal with that switch. We're through. Yes, we are. Pull a little bit through here. I'm gonna turn the breaker off and splice everything on so I can get that back together. So, uh, soffit receptacle. I gotta relabel this because that was originally soffit receptacle. Now it's freaking everything. It went from soffit receptacle to doing the gazebo, the tower, this new generator room, and the parking lot light pole that I've got set up. So it started out as soffit receptacle. Now it's freaking everything outside here. Okay, first we'll hook up our ground. I'm just gonna pull everything out of here. Everything lined up properly. I should not be going through there like that. That just looks bad. We'll rehook that up after. Route this ground back here. Should go behind that hot. And get stripped. And let's see if we can just neatly add this on. We're probably not going to be able to. Uh, it actually didn't work out too bad this time. Yeah, switch back up there.
All right, there you have it. And yes, I do usually like to splice outdoor connections upwards, but I don't have enough room in here to twist it that way to go up, to go up and then down to go back up. I don't know, that was a terrible way of wording that. All right, do we got space for that to go back in? Yes, we do. I just want to get this end of it done so I don't have to reopen this outdoor box and turn off the whole circuit and crap. Bless me. <coughs> oh, not again. Uh, probably COVID. Get all the crap done inside of here. Run all our grounds to the same spot. I got one, two, three, four, five. Neutral time. Always makes things easier if you just put them all back into the same corner or same wherever. Just makes it easier to bend them all up in the end. If you can, sometimes it's too late and you don't have enough room or length to do it. When you can, it certainly makes it easier. All right, now for the hots. This one needs constant power, or this is constant power, I should say. This one needs constant power. Okay, this one is constant power. This one needs constant power. This one needs constant power. This one will be switched though, because that's for our light bulb which is also a heater because I'm using a light bulb for my heat source in here so it'll be on a thermostat So those are all the ones that'll be constant hot. 
This one will be off the other side of our thermostat. Now we've got to put on this mud ring to take this from double gang to single gang. The reason I didn't just put in a single gang box is I wanted more knockouts and this would be tougher to fit in a single gang that might actually be over your allowable box fill. Okay, so your red is usually your switch sides. Not that it probably matters, but actually I'm gonna restrip these anyways. This is an old thermostat, but I don't care. It will still work fine, probably. This thermostat isn't going to be on 240 volt it's only going to be 120 volt but it doesn't matter because on 240 volt thermostats you only switch one 120 volt leg you're not switching both so it makes no difference whether the other side's another hot or a neutral Got two 632 screws to hold on our thermostat here. Once we turn the power on, I should be able to test, make sure this thermostat is working right for my light and check our emergency light and the fan in here once I get power on in a bit. Okay, there's our thermostat. Now we gotta do our light. I bought the cheapest socket I could, but the fact they even make them this cheap just is just pathetic. It's like, look, you're neutral, isn't even metal. It's got this one little tab. It's got your hot tab at the back, which is normal, but like the whole rest of the socket is just plastic, not even metal. It's like, and look at these terminal strips. Like, could you make this thing any cheaper? Holy crap. Hook up our neutral clockwise and our hot clockwise Sorry if I'm not showing this very well. Anyways, there's our hot and our neutral. Not that it matters what way it goes, but you should do it right in case it gets replaced with an LED bulb.
speaking of that, we can open that right now. There, there it is, 250 watt. Now this isn't an all around, like it's not a put out on light on all sides incandescent. It will only go out this way, which is what I wanted because I didn't want it to aim it down too much on the thermostat and give it a false reading. I may have to move this over. The whole door might not close properly. These bases just suck. Can't get them very tight even. All right, the whole door might not close with this. We might have to adjust it. We'll see. Just curious to see if the door is even gonna close properly now. <laughs> no, it's not either. Okay, we're gonna have to do something about that. Okay, I didn't record that by accident. I just took this off and took out one screw. So if we bend it that way, that should be fine. Cause it's not the box that's in the way, it's that bulb. So if we could aim it back that way more at an angle would be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this little piece of EMT on the back of the box here to keep it at an angle to keep it pulled out. So once it's even once it's screwed in tight, they'll keep it out from the wall. So our screw will go through right there. If it would stay on the drill. So I'll put that right there. Put the screw through it. Turn up the other side first. That keeps that other side will keep the box um, vertically straight. This one will just keep it out far enough. So that kind of got it tight all the way. Can't fit the drill bit in there. All right. All right, there you can see maybe that that's, that's actually aimed like, if you put you in line with it, it's aimed sort of right at that fan and right across, which I think is good. Okay, now let's wire up just a switch there. I was gonna do the reverse acting thermostat. Might just cause more problems with the lamp shining right on it. Just gonna heat it up. I feel like we're best to just do a switch and just run it on a really hot day or when the generator's running, because you got to go in there anyways. I'm going to install a switch for that um, fan. And I've only got a 20 amp toggle. I want to use a toggle, but I've only got 20 amps, so I'm just going to have to use this one fan, as I might need that 20 amp on something else, so I don't want to waste it on this here. So line side in the top, load side on the bottom. I think we've got everything done in here and we're just ready to turn on power. Let's see if any is up. Bang! Just kidding. What do we want to try out first, our emergency light? 
seems to do it, it's uh it seems to do its thing try our light oh yeah that's a hot bulb that'll warm that up in no time oh yeah that thing gives off some heat Yeah, that, that that's that's a hot bulb. You can feel it. I think I'll leave that at like 15 degrees. Let's try the fan. Pretty nice quiet fan. Not sure how much air it's pushing through. Yeah, not much. Well, the door's open too. Have to see it with the door closed, see if it's really pushing much air through. See how much it's pulling through. Oh yeah, it's, it's pulling some air through. Gotta wash your hands because there's nothing stopping you from sticking them in there. That bulb certainly gives off some heat too. Definitely is. Yeah, that's working pretty good. Oh, that's a warm light. And it shines on this reflective wall, which I think, I think that should really keep it pretty good in here for that, that generator. We could even, I might even keep this bit so when we're not needing the regenerator, we can just shove that in the window to help with some breeze. Oh, yeah, it's. Definitely pulling some air through. Watch this. <laughs> oh, went a little too fast for it. Maybe it's not as impressive as I thought. This fan worked good. I almost feel like the fan's definitely getting bogged down, which makes me think, like watch it. The louver's slightly closed, which makes me think maybe we need a larger louver letting air in. Like maybe I should add another one, not sure. 
It's a nice quiet fan though. I thought, I thought it might be really loud and it's not. All right, I don't need that fan on anymore. And I think I'll just leave this set to about 15 degrees. It probably won't turn off the door open, but I want to I want to leave it set to 15. Let's close the door once I get my tools out of there and see if it turns off. So mentioned in the last video that I want to be able to stop that generator cord from coming out more than it needs to. So I think I'm going to pull out as much as I think I need to. So if it comes out and plugs into an inlet box, like I may put it there, but let's say for this case scenario, it ends up right there. We need that much cord to go into the bottom of it. To see if this thing will catch on fire tonight with that bulb in it, that'll be interesting. That'd probably get lots of views and make for a good video. But then I have to rebuild this, so then that'd be a pain. We've got this much cord left in here which as you can see is plenty to plug into a generator and that's like the furthest case scenario away on the outside so i probably won't even need this much does that strap stop it well not really for this strap yeah there we go I can bend it out now there it's off and now I can uh, maybe crush it down a little all right yeah that works good works good right there let's see if this thing actually goes away properly here you know what that's not too bad I was worried it was gonna get all coiled up in the box but that works pretty good actually kind of went all over the place in there might be a pain once there's a generator in there anyways this is set to around 15 degrees that's putting lots of heat. Something smells like it's melting. Not too worried about it. It's probably just dust on the bulb. Unless it's melting that plastic socket. Who knows? Anyways, let's close that door and see if that bulb goes off. Well, I don't really feel like standing around waiting for a light bulb to go off. So I think I'm going to end this video now I'm probably not done, well I'm definitely not done with this generator project because I still got to do all of the stuff of actually connecting into the shed. That's the main thing. This was just something to make it quieter. I would like to maybe bring down some fire alarm into this to have a detector of some sort to know if anything's getting crazy in there. But um, for now that's it for this video. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to leave those down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.